I'm making an animated that for a tattoo slash baba show. I gotta make it good, fast, and with a zero dollar budget. I already spent 10 to 15 minutes writing down the script before this, so I now want to visualize it by drawing the storyboard. The final animation will be made in 3D, but I usually make the rough sketches in 3D since it's more efficient. I'm not going for a fancy storyboard. I just want to plan what I want to include in the scene and the camera shots that can better tell the story. I'm not thinking about the animations yet other than just the key actions. I'll think about the animations later on when I shoot the references but more on that later. So I'm not done with the storyboard. Let's record the script and see if it works. Bro, my beanie, we rock that. So I got the mic over here. You won't see it. Got the microphone over here. So, <coughs> okay, so two things to clarify before we get into the recording. One, we are working with a zero dollar budget. So that's why I'm recording the verse over myself. Two, this is not the best microphone at all. So I usually just clean up the audio afterwards to make up for that. So last night I saw her status and decided to shoot my shot. But eh, left on C. I always like to close my eyes whenever I'm recording like lines that are not um, paired to a video. So when I'm whenever I'm recording a video and I have to, you know, to look at a camera, obviously like, I can't close my eyes. But whenever I'm not recording like that, I always close my eyes for some reason. I feel like I can um, visualize things well in my mind. Bona boy, do it for the hand. Bona boy, do it for the hand. Bona boy, do it for the hand. So in the morning, I my name. So in the morning, I... <clears throat> I forgot the first boy. Taxi driver even made me pay for two. Taxi driver even made me pay for two seats around in mine because it's a lot of I got fed it up and even got a tattoo because it looks safe. If you don't do it for the hands, at least do it for yourself. Go tattoo guy SA. I thought the audio was being recorded throughout this screen recording, but turns out it was not. So just to clarify a bit, I was combining the voiceover with the storyboard to get a feeling of how the animation will be. Think of this as an outline of the animation before the fancy final animation. This means I'm cutting down and editing out parts of the audio I don't need. I'm also working on the timing by figuring out how long each shot will last and seeing how long the final animation will be. The animation will be around 51 seconds. The exact time might change after I animate, but I'm still shooting for below 1 minute so that the animation can count as a youtube shot we're still missing some sound effects and music to bring it up to life but i'll save that for the final edit since i'm pinching time just to clarify i'm not paid to make this i know the owner of the shop so i thought i could surprise him with this animation so that i can in turn use it for my portfolio i asked him if i can use his reaction in this video and he agreed so you'll also get to hear that later on in the video I want to go with something simple for the style of this animation and I usually go on Pinterest to look for references. Choosing a simple art style will help me finish the animation faster which is what I'm going for. So after scrolling for some time, this is what I chose for my references. I want to use all of these to craft a new art style for the animation. The easiest way to come up with a new art style is by taking a little bit from each of your references and making it make sense. For example, I like the ears of this character, the eyes of these two characters, and the head shape of this character. Doing that makes it easier to come up with something new so that your work won't look like a straight up copy of the previous artist. I made an in-depth video about how to find an art style, so make sure you go check it out if you're interested in knowing more about that. When I sculpt, I typically start by adding details on the head first, then move from there. The character design I'm going with doesn't require some anatomy skills, which makes it faster to sculpt. For example, the head is a simple bean shape, the eyes won't be carved in, and I won't be adding muscle to the body. It's been refreshing to work on something simple for a change since I got done working on the 30 heads in 30 days challenge which required me to learn hair and atom. The video for that will be posted in a few days. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you like the content. Now it's time to animate, but before we do that, we have to prepare the model by lowering the density of the vertices, aka retopologizing, then rig the character. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this stage since it's more technical, but basically for me to animate this character, I have to make things easier for the computer to handle it. So since sculpting requires a lot of vertices to get the details right, I'm now lowering those vertices by placing these connected faces, which are a lot more bigger, making the character to have less vertices. I then shade smooth everything to make it 
bit less boxy. As you can see, I have a few references on screen to help me out throughout this stage. That's the easiest way to explain it for now, but there's a lot more that goes into it. I then also rig the character, which is essentially adding bones so that I can be able to move it. These two steps go hand in hand. The way you place the faces when you retopologize affects how the character's body will react when you move the bones. I'm not the best at retopologizing and rigging, so I'll have to sculpt and fix some parts when I animate. But for now, the rig is decent. I also then go back to take some parts of the body and make a shot out of it. This will also make it move along with the rig when I animate since you just copy. Now you might be wondering why I'm out here. If you're not, I'm still gonna say it anyway. I'm basically taking references to help me out when I animate. As weird as this might be, this is what I'll be using as a reference to get the movements and the animations to be as close as possible to how a real human would move. This is weird because people are passing over there and uh, I guess they gotta record. The setup I got to even shoot this is crazy too. I can't show you that side, but I basically got a webcam out of my room's window and on a ring light tripod. Okay, so we're done taking reference videos. Now let's go animate. I want to start with the taxi scene. The character is sitting down, so I'll have to work on moving the bones into that position first. At this point, my PC kept crashing for multiple days, so I have to show you how I ended up animating instead. I'll show you one scene that had a lot of movement. The very same scene, where the character is inside the taxi. The first thing you'll notice about this is how there's no taxi at all, but just three seats, a background, and a roof. That's because that's what we'll only show on camera to save the time. Like our reference, the character starts by looking outside, looks inside to his right, breathes in and out, crushes his beard, and then looks back outside. So looking at the rig, which is not perfect by the way, the neck bone, the head, and the hand are the ones moving more, as you can see according to these keyframes. Here's the beginning pose in frame 1, here's the second pose in frame 40, the breathing pose in 56, the itching pose in 84, as you can see the hand is not even touching the beard, I just didn't want to deal with head dynamics. We are then back to looking outside in frame 112. Also went easy on making the materials, since the point was to make this faster, so I used basic materials materials and lean more into the lighting. I went with a simple 3 point lighting and then an extra light to light up the face for the camera. Ok so here's the final edit. I used DaVinci Resolve for editing. Other than replacing the sketches with clean renders, I added a lot to make it make sense. First of all the animations were way too fast. This was because I edited a lot of actions within a smaller amount of frames and this was due to my computer lagging while I was animating. So I did go back to Blender to stretch out the animations for some scenes but for some other scenes I really liked how it looked when I reduced the speed to 50%. Doing this gives it the spider verse effect and for the most part I really like how that looked. The second thing I did was to ask my brothers to help me out with voice over work so that I can bring this commotion to life. I don't know why I was planning on doing this alone at first because this sounds way much better and I'm not terror strong. The third thing I did was to add a lot of music and sound effects. The music part was simple since the owner of the shop is a producer and a musician so I just took one of the songs from his album and it ended up matching well with the story. The link to the final animation will be in the description below so please go check it out. I'm also opening up a few spots if you wanna work with me. Anything from animated ads for your business to animated music videos and visualizers. I'll leave my business email in the description. Too. See you in the next one. Hey, Mona, this is Seiki Mona. This is 6666. Six, six, six. Don't forget to subscribe. Okay. Okay.